Whether you're using a jackhammer in the summer or blowing out cracks in the winter, the air compressor is on the job all year long. It doesn't get put into storage like a lot of equipment. And that makes it all the more important for you to take care of and operate the air compressor correctly. So before even leaving the station, here's the procedure you should follow to ensure a trouble-free day of operation. First, make sure the wheels are blocked before you hook up the compressor or do any work on it at all. Don't take chances where your safety is concerned. Once the compressor is secure, check the fan belts for tension and wear. And make sure all the gauges are clean so you can read them clearly. Check out the hoses and wiring. Replace, tighten, or repair any that are damaged or loose. Check the air filter restriction indicator. If it's clear like this, it's okay. But if it turns red, you'll have to clean or replace the air filter. Next, check the engine oil level. Of course, if it's low, add some. But check the oil's condition too. If it's really dirty, get it changed before you start the engine. Be sure to check the compressor's oil level, too. If you can see oil in the sight glass, you've got enough. Again, look over the hoses and the wiring. Make sure everything's tight and in good shape. Next, check the battery, connections, and water level. Wipe off any buildups of corrosion. Now check the tires, pressure and condition. Make sure all the lug nuts are tight. Okay, now the air hose. Make sure it's in good shape with no crimps or holes. By the way, stringing the hose around and over the unit like this is a good way to ruin it. Not only that, it's dangerous to travel with the hose in this position. So always wind it up on the spool before you go out on the road. It only takes a few minutes. Once you've wound up the hose, unhook any attachments and check the condition of the gasket inside the coupler. The gasket has to be in good shape or else air will escape from the coupler and that loss of pressure will cut down the power of any tools you attach to the coupler. The next step is hooking up the unit to the truck. You can do it alone, but it's easier if you have some help. All you have to do is drop the towing pin through the eye and secure it with a cotter key. Then fasten the safety chains to the truck. Finally, check the coolant and fuel levels. Both should have been checked and filled the previous day, but it's always a good idea to make sure. Okay, that's it for daily checks. Now, start up. The first step in starting is to open one of the two air valves on the front of the compressor. That keeps air pressure from building up in the system and makes it easier to start the engine. Now all you have to do is flip the starter switch and push down both the starter button and the circuit override button at the same time. As soon as the engine starts, release the starter button, but hold down the circuit override until the air pressure reaches 20 PSI. Then close the air valve and that's startup. Now, hook up. 
Even though there are several attachments that can be hooked up to the compressor, you can follow this procedure for all of them. For example, when working with a jackhammer, put the bit on the hammer before you attach the ear hose. The point here is this. Don't assemble any attachment while it's under pressure. Once you've assembled the attachment, you can hook up the airline. Snap the couplers together and turn them to lock them in place. Secure the couplers by running a wire through the holes. If the couplers come apart, the wire will prevent the air hose from whipping around and possibly hurting someone. And that's it for hookup. You're ready for work. But before you use any attachment, Make sure the engine temperature is at least 160 degrees and the engine oil pressure is between 30 and 40 PSI. Okay, now let's take a look at a typical operation using the air compressor. We'll use crack sealing as an example. On this job, the compressor is used with an air wand attachment to blow dust and moisture from cracks in the pavement. The cracks cannot be properly repaired unless they are both clean and dry. Sometimes the surface you are sealing is in pretty bad condition. The crack still needs to be blown out, but try to hold the tip of the wand a little higher over the surface so you don't tear up any of the good pavement. Although this is a simple job, you have to remain alert. The air from the wand can blow debris out of the cracks with enough force to hurt someone standing nearby. Keep an eye on traffic. Of course, you want to avoid blowing debris at traffic, but even more important is the fact that with the noise of the compressor and the other machinery around you, you may not be able to hear approaching vehicles or the warning shouts from your crew. So look up and check around every few seconds to make sure you're safe. And that's basically all that's involved in operation. When you're done with the unit at the end of the day, close the air valves and let the engine idle for a few minutes to cool down gradually. Walk around the unit one more time. Look for any leaks or signs of damage. Anything you can take care of now will save you time the next time you use the compressor. And after the cool down period, shut off the engine. You'll probably operate equipment that's a lot more complicated than the air compressor during your career with the department. But the same equation will always apply. Thorough daily maintenance plus careful operation equals a skilled and responsible operator. <laughs>